Hello everyone, it's Mafalda and welcome to a new video. I'm finally doing part two of my last book haul of the year. I need to get this over with because I am tired of having all of these books to show you. And if you haven't seen part one, I'll link it up here. I think I posted it last month and yeah, in that video I talked about 30 books and in this one I'm going to be talking about 25 books and then I'll only have like a book haul for the books that I get um, for Christmas because I'm probably gonna get some books so I'll talk about those next year. Let's just start this video because this is going to be a long one. So the first book that I have here to talk about is one that I've already talked about on my channel quite a few times and it's Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen and the title and subtitle are pretty self-explanatory and this book is about asexuality. I read this book for the nonfiction baddies book club that I host with Casey and I just learned so so much with this book. It's a pretty short book but it really packs a lot of information and even if you're not ace like me I highly recommend that you read this book you're gonna learn so much about yourself and other people and just sexuality and sex in general so I really highly recommend this now the next book that I have to talk about is ask again yes by Mary Beth Keen and honestly I've heard a lot of good things about this book but I honestly don't know what it talks about so I'm gonna have to read the back before I tell you. So I think this book follows two different families, the Gleasons and the Stanhopes, and they recently moved to the same small town in upstate New York and their neighbors. And when the two families move in, they have two respective daughters. They have Lena Gleason, who just wants a friend, and Anna Stanhope, who just wants to be left alone. So they clearly want different things. And then the story follows their children, um, coming together and dealing with like family trauma or something. Um, that's what I gathered. It says that Ask Again Yes reveals the way childhood memories change when viewed from the distance of adulthood. So I'm really interested, honestly. I am intrigued. I think this is adult fiction, but it kind of like the back reads like like a mystery thriller. I don't really know, um, but I'm intrigued to find out. Then the next book that I bought is Cracked Up To Be by Courtney Summers. I think I put this in my September TBR or something and I never got around to it. Uh, this is a pretty short book and I am really excited to read it. And this book follows perfect Parker Fadley who is the cheerleader and she's dating the most popular guy in school and she's the teacher's pet and she's like perfect like everyone calls her. But then Parker starts drinking and failing all her classes and people are really concerned for her. Her parents even put her on the suicide watch list and at the same time a really nice guy in school starts falling for her and she doesn't know what to do about that and also there was something horrible that happened I think at school and she thinks she is to blame for that and it just sounds super interesting. I'm really intrigued to find out what is happening in the story. Also this is a pretty short book so I think it's perfect to read in a rainy and cloudy day like it is today and I just think it sounds super interesting. Now the next book that I got was Wild Beauty by Anne-Marie McLemore. I'm super excited to finally dive into one of Marie McLemore's works because I've never read anything by them and I'm just so intrigued by all of their books. Uh, so I'm starting with this one which was a booktube staple a couple of years ago. Like everyone talks about this book in the beginning of booktube, like 2013 booktube, and I just remember seeing this cover everywhere but I never got around to it so finally have it. And for this one I'm gonna have to read you a bit of the back because I don't think I will explain it well if I just like start telling you what it is about, so I'm just gonna read. For nearly a century, the Nomial Vids women have tended to the grounds of La Pradera, the lush estate gardens that enchant guests from around the world. They've also hidden a tragic legacy. If they fall in love too deeply, their lovers vanish. But then, after generations of vanishings, a strange boy appears in the gardens. A boy neither Estrella, the Nomial Vids girl who finds him, nor her family knows anything about. 
the Naomi Elvide's grandmothers treat him like a lost son. The Naomi Elvide's mothers hope he's a sign that their vanished loved might reappear. Estrella's cousins worry his presence is a warning that none of them yet understands, but however much this boy is an enigma to them, it's even more of a mystery to himself. All he knows about who he is or where he came from is the first three letters of his name. This book just sounds so magical and whimsical and I don't know why, but I feel like I'm going to love it. I really hope I do and I'm so excited to finally get to it. The next book is one that I've already talked about on my channel and it's The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. I... what is this? Oh my god. <laughs> I've already talked about my thoughts on this book two times on my channel, I think, so I'm not gonna say them anymore. But basically, this is a mystery thriller. This book is basically about a psychologist that tries to treat a patient that has been silent for six years. The patient is called Alicia Berenson, and she has been silent ever since she killed her husband six years ago, and the psychologist wants to know what happened and try to get her to talk about it, and... It was a very promising book, but it just didn't do it for me at all, and yeah. Now the next book is one that I've been meaning to read for a while now, and it's Milkman by Anna Burns. This was the Man Booker Prize of 2018, and I've seen this book everywhere, and I, I'm really curious about it. I honestly don't know what it talks about either, so I'm just gonna have to see what the back says. Honestly, from reading the back, I still don't really, not really sure if what the book talks about, but I feel like it's about a story about people who are trying to hide something from one another, and it's, it says that it's a tale of gossip and hearsay, silence and deliberate deafness, so don't really know what that is about, but it just sounds interesting, I don't know. And those were all of the books that I bought in August, and now we move on to the books that I bought in September, basically because I bought a lot of books at the Lisbon Book Fair, and this year I decided to basically only buy books by Portuguese authors and books in Portuguese as well, or both, um, at the Lisbon Book Fair, because it's a really great opportunity to buy Portuguese books at good prices because books in Portugal are not cheap at all and that's also one of the many reasons why I buy books in English and why I read in English but I really want to support more Portuguese authors and I feel like I don't know a lot of them so I asked for your Portuguese suggestions on Instagram and I got a bunch of them I made a whole document with all of your suggestions and then when I was at the Lisbon Book Fair I decided to get some so now I'm going to be talking about a lot of books by Portuguese authors in Portuguese which aren't translated so if you're not from Portugal you can't read this book so I'm so sorry but I will still try to translate the titles and kind of tell you what they are about even though you can't read them but whatever let's just move on so the first book that i got was aquaria inspira by mj frey and i'm so sorry for like switching between portuguese and english it's really hard and the pronunciation is going to be all off for this part of the video i'm sorry in advance and i actually met the author of this book at the lisbon book fair and she signed my book and i waited in line for like two hours for her to sign my book but she was so so nice and totally worth it to wait in line and also i was with friends so it was fine and this is a fantasy book and i think this is the first of many because it says one right here so i'm not really sure if that's like the first of many books to come or if it's just like the first edition of this book I'm not really sure but I think this is going to be a series and this is the first book and it follows our main character Arabella and on the day of her grandfather's funeral she drowns mysteriously and when she wakes up she's in Aquaria which is a community that is basically under the sea levels. I'm sorry for all the light changes, suddenly the sun decided to appear and when she's in Aquaria she feels like she's there for a reason and it wasn't just like a mishap in her life and also she meets a guy there named Kai who is very mysterious and she feels very drawn to him and I think 
think like some mysterious things start happening in Aquaria and people start mysteriously dying all of a sudden and she feels like she's there to help and she's there for a reason. I'm super excited to eventually get to it. This is a chunky boy but I am ready. Now the next book that I got at the Lisbon Book Fair was Uj da Rua by Anja Ki. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, I'm not really sure. And this is a book by an author from Angola, so he's not Portuguese but he speaks Portuguese. And this is actually a collection of short stories by him set in Angola in Africa and I'm so excited to read something by him. I've seen this cover a lot and I've just heard a lot of great things about it and also it's a pretty short book and also I haven't read any book by an Angolan author I think um, so this will be my first one and I'm so so excited. Now the next book that I got I also talked about in my October wrap-up that I posted a few weeks ago and it's Amor a Primera Assinatura by Leonard Frau. This is also a short story, I guess. I'm not really sure if you could call this a short story or a novella. And this book follows Teresa, who is an inspiring author. And one day she decides to publish a book about a relationship that she had with a man in the past, like it's a fiction book. She basically takes all of that relationship and publishes with different names as a fiction work and then one day that guy that she dated and that she talked about in her book called Simão um, comes back into her life and demands answers and it's kind of like why did you publish a book about our relationship and this is a really fun story i really liked simon and Teresa's relationship and the way it was told romance is not really my thing but i really was rooting for this couple and i'm so excited to see if leonor writes more from this story and from these characters because i'm just i want to see more of them so yeah that was another book that i got now this book is not by a portuguese author and is not in portuguese actually it's actually in English and also it's a really weird book for me to show you but I also got this at the Lisbon Book Fair and it's a book about Monet the painter I really like Monet this is probably one of my favorite paintings the water lilies is just beautiful I love the colors and I decided to get this book about his paintings and basically it has a painting and then some stuff about the painting next to it and it's just beautiful. This is basically like a coffee table book but I just love art books. I love getting them and just having them in my collection. I don't know, I have like one or two but I just adore them so got this one and I am super happy about it. Now the next book is one that I've been meaning to get for so long and I finally found it at the Lisbon Book Fair and it was so hard to find this book online even and I still can't believe I got it and I'm so excited to read it and it's Pequeno Manual Antirracista by Jamila Ribeiro. This is basically a little manual about anti-racism and this is by a Brazilian author and it was, it was surprisingly really hard to get this book. Like this is a book in Portuguese and I can't find it anywhere here in Portugal. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's from a Brazilian author, I don't know. Um, but I'm so excited to read this book. I've heard amazing things about Jamila Ribeiro and I'm just so excited to get to this one. Also it's tiny and also inside, well it's called small manual about anti-racism so that's why. I feel like I've been talking forever so I'm gonna have to start like grouping books and talking about them together so I don't take that long to do this haul. Now the next two books I got are by the same author who is a Portuguese author and it's Afonso Cruz. This was probably one of the authors that people recommended me the most. I've been told that his books are kind of like Murakami's work and I love Murakami so I'm so ready for it. So I got Flores, which is like beautiful. I love this cover so much. And then I also got Para Onde Vamos Guarda Chuvas. Just the fact that pe like multiple people said that this reads like Murakami just has me so intrigued. From everyone's reviews of this author, I just feel like I'm going to like it. So I'm so ready to read one of his works. And now the next book that I got was also by an author that was recommended to me so, so much. It's probably the one that was recommended to me the most and it's João Tordo. I got A Mulher Que Correu Atrás Do Vento and this book follows four different women uh, throughout a century so they're all in different years 
1992, one in 1991, one in 1973, and one in 2015. And I think they're all connected somehow, and they're all from different cities. And it's all about their lives and their loves and their losses. And I'm so intrigued also by this author because a lot of people recommended it to me, and I just... I'm ready to read it. Also, I almost forgot, but I met this author and he signed my book and he was just so nice and kind and it was a blast to talk to him and yeah. Now the next four books that I got are not by Portuguese authors as well, but I also got at the Lisbon Book Fair and it was Saga Volume 5, oh my god, 6, <laughs> 7, and 8. Um, so basically I didn't get the last one. I've already talked about this in a video, but I didn't get volume 9 because I've heard that volume 9 ends in a really big cliffhanger. And I think a few weeks after I said that, Brian K. Vaughn finally said that he was going to publish the next volume, so volume 10 next year, I think. So now I can get volume 9 and read it in peace. But yeah, I got the next four volumes of Saga that I still haven't read and I still want to get to this year, maybe? I don't know. I don't know if I have time, but at least vol volume 5 I will get to. And yeah, I'm excited to continue with this series. I love these books and also I love getting these, like these are in Portuguese and they're hardcovers and I just love these editions for some reason. So yeah, excited. Now the last book that I got at the Lisbon Book Fair was the only book that I got in English apart from the Monet one, which like I'm not really counting here, and it was Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. I saw this book and it was like, it had been out for like one or two months and it was such a good deal. I think I got this book for like nine years or something and I just couldn't pass it off so I immediately got it and also I love this cover and I've been really interested in reading this book. This is a romance book and it follows our main character Nala and she goes one day to an open mic night and there she meets a guy who is called Ty Brown and Ty seems perfect to Nala and so as their relationship progresses and they start dating and everything, Nala starts telling a few lies so that he will like her better, basically. But then I think her lies start catching up to her and like exposing her, obviously, because you're not supposed to lie to your significant other. And I just think it's going to be a really fun, cute read, a short read as well. And I'm really excited. Now, the next book that I got was actually a present and I talked about it in one of my vlogs and my boyfriend got me Heartstopper Volume 3. I finally almost have the complete collection of Heartstopper books because I've been slowly collecting them because I didn't have them physically and I really wanted them. So now I just need Volume 2 and my boyfriend surprised me with Volume 3 one day and I'm just so grateful. Thank you again. Now, the next book that I got was White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. And this was our 20-something book club pick for October, I think. Yes, October. And we already did our live show. I will link it up here. And I really enjoyed this book. This is probably my least favorite Tiffany D. Jackson up until now, but it's also her first time trying a new genre of horror. So, and this book follows Marigold and she and her family decide to move to a new small town because her mother is offered a house there. And once they move there, Marigold starts seeing some weird things happen in the house and she feels like the house is haunted. I don't really read a lot of horror, but this was probably one of the only books that has made me actually scared. <laughs> like while reading, I was actually scared and yeah, she did it. Now the next book that I got was This Poison Heart by Callan Barron. I've already talked about this one in my October wrap-up, I think, as well. And this book is a secret garden retelling and it follows our main character, Brie, who has a magical power. And basically every time she's around plants and nature, those plants and nature kind of like grows and is like moves towards her and starts to flourish and everything. And when she inherits an old house that used to be her mother's, she finally has the privacy and all of the space and tools to finally practice her power in peace. But when she starts exploring the house, she 
finds some secrets about her family and about her past that she didn't know about and this was a really interesting read. I am so excited to read the next book which is coming out next year I think and yeah I highly recommend this one. Now the next book that I got is our nonfiction buddies book for November and December so if you still want to join us you can and it is Crying in Age Mar by Michelle Zahner. I got the ugly cover of the book and this is a memoir about Michelle Zahner's life and about her growing up as Korean American in the US and I just think it's going to be a really impactful read and I've heard amazing things about this book so I'm super super excited to get to it. And similarly the next book that I got was our book club pick for the 20-something book club for November and it was How Moon Fuentes Fell in Love with the Universe by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. I've already read this book obviously and this book follows Moon Fuentes who is our main character and she is the sister of a very famous um, like social media star called Star Fuentes. They're siblings and they're twins and basically Moon Fuentes has always been the ugly unwanted sister in the background of her sister's fame and then in the summer she gets a job as a merch girl in a like tour of social media stars that her sister is going on and she's there to sell merch and when she's there she meets Santiago Phillips who is also selling merch with her and basically they're like enemies at first but then they start to become lovers I guess and yeah it's a enemies to lovers romance with a lot of other topics sprinkled in the book and I overall kind of enjoy this. I like the cover more than I like the story I think. Now the last book that I will be talking about in this haul and in the year of 2021 is one that I'm actually reading this month and it's The Summer Describe by Anastasia Reis. This is a dark fantasy novella by a Portuguese author. I really wanted to support her work and I just think First of all, this cover is gorgeous and also I feel like I'm going to really enjoy this one. It's also a very short book which I love already and yeah I really wanted to get this one to support Anna and her amazing work so I got it and I'm so happy and it was the last book that I actually bought for myself this year and now I'll just wait for Christmas and next year. I already got so many books in 2021 so I really need to hold myself accountable. I'm on a book buying ban until at least Christmas. Yeah that concludes my very long haul part two of two and and I'm now only going to make a new haul next year so look out for that probably with the books that I get for Christmas and other than that that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Bye!